Seth Berenzweig joins us right now, a business law attorney, because another issue that comes up is companies have to be the ones now that implement these moves, right? And, and it's, it's going to be kind of dicey because they're targeted for those earning less than 104000 and then you have to make sure you get this money out there. A lot of companies are very, very concerned about if they do put that money out and this is only a temporary measure, they have to pay that money back. So, um, Seth, maybe you can help me with this. That sounds to me like a bureaucratic mess. How do these companies do it? Good afternoon, Neil, and you're absolutely right. This is an instance where the president's heart was absolutely in the right place, but it creates more questions than answers. This is really a burden that falls on the backs of the companies. America's employers want to get back to work. They want to get uh, money in the hands of their employees. But the problem as it relates to the executive order for this payroll tax is that there's a lack of clarity and businesses are really going to be in a tough spot. Let's put aside legally the question of constitutionality, which is in and of itself a sticky widget. If, if you just go by that and if you just take a look at the practical elements, at the end of the day, the employer is always the party that's responsible for paying the payroll tax. And while some have suggested that if the employee ultimately doesn't pay it back at the end of the year, that the employer can just do a clawback, um, they can't do that either because that's uh, a violation of just about every state law from coast to coast uh, under wage statutes. So when you're talking about actually plugging this in and starting the engine, it's really tricky. So what's to stop South the company from saying, look, this was done on, under non-traditional means. We commend the president trying to move the ball, but we feel very uncomfortable following an executive edict that does not have the blessing of Congress, which normally does have the power of the purse string. So we're not going to do it. What, what punishment or what risk do they have implementing that or more to the point, not implementing it? Well, I think that's a great question because I think companies are really at risk right now. If they don't implement the executive order, I think that certainly they're going to get some blowback from Washington because the president will say he was pretty clear. But on the other hand, as we've talked about, it really is a dilemma for the employers. At the end of the day, I think that they'll either step aside from the order and not follow it, or, or they'll just accrue the money and then they'll, they'll pay it later. I mean, if you take a look back at, at the last time that Washington did this, where they actually enacted a a temporary payroll tax cut that was agreed upon by law. It was done in 2010 when President Obama and the Congress was actually able to work together. At that point, companies were required to follow federal law. As your guest noted previously, the president doesn't have the, the power to enact law. And along the lines of what the senator said, if Washington really wants to step in and help employers and employees, frankly, I think that they should go in and, and they should enact uh, a liability shield. That's really something that they should do right now. If uh, involved uh, promulgating any kind of a disbursement of additional funds, and then it would really help not only corporate America, but schools as well. So it is a problem. Washington still has a lot of work to do, but hopefully they'll be able to, to find a solution, and hopefully a liability shield will be a component of that. That's very interesting. You're right. If they, do, if they were able to, to move together on this, they could make a moot point of the constitutionality and all that. But uh, we'll see. Seth Burns, like, thank you very, very very much.